We're going to look today at the theorem of Pythagoras. Uh, Pythagoras is this guy over here who lived in ancient Greece in about the 6th century BC. And he did a lot of different mathematics, came up with quite a lot of interesting mathematical ideas. But the one that he's most famous for is a fact about right angle triangles, which has become known as the theorem of Pythagoras. Now, before we actually get to the theorem, we are just going to look at a few little facts about right angle triangles. So the first and most obvious thing is right angle triangles, right? That means it's a triangle that has a right angle. In other words, it's a triangle that has got an angle that's equal to 90 degrees. Then we have a fancy word we use in when we talk about the sides of right angle triangles. Have a look here. Here is your right angle, right? It's this thing here. There are two sides that kind of the are the arms that make up that right angle. So they are next to it. And then there's another side that is opposite it, right? That is opposite the right angle. And that side opposite the right angle has a fancy name. Its fancy name is the hypotenuse. So big fancy name, hypotenuse, just means that it is the side that is opposite the right angle. The other two sides, the ones that make up the arms of the angle, they have, are not really interesting and so they aren't given any special name and they're just called side one. I'm just going to call them side one and side two so I've got some way to talk about them. Okay, now the one thing we should know immediately is this hypotenuse will be the longest side because it's opposite the biggest angle. 90 degrees is the biggest angle in this triangle because these two are both little acute angles. So we know in any triangle, the longest side is always opposite the biggest angle. And so the hypotenuse is the longest side opposite that 90 degrees, the biggest angle. But Pythagoras, and this is where Pythagoras' theorem is really clever, actually showed us is we can say more than the hypotenuse is just the biggest side, we can actually find a relationship. And we can what the relationship that is, Pythagoras' theorem says, is this. If I take the size of the hypotenuse and I square it, it is equal to the size of this, the length of this thing squared, plus the length of the other side squared. So let me just give you an example. Say I've got here a triangle that has got sides of 3 and 4, and I want to figure out how long is the hypotenuse. Well, good old Pythagoras tells me that my hypotenuse squared is equal to side 1 squared plus side 2 squared. So this tells me my hypotenuse squared is equal to 9 plus 16, and 9 plus 16 is 25. So I know that my, I'm going to just abbreviate it to height because it's going to take too long to write otherwise, my hypotenuse squared is 25. So what will my hypotenuse be? Well, my hypotenuse will just be the square root of 25, and that is 5. So I can know that this length here is 5. And this relationship works in every single right angle triangle. If I want to work out what the hypotenuse is, I can just use this fact, that if we're in a right angle triangle, hypotenuse squared is equal to side 1 squared plus side 2 squared. And this is a really nice fact to be able to use, but it only works for right-angled triangles. So here is the theorem of Pythagoras. This was the, the, the um, interesting fact that he figured out, which is that in any right-angled triangle, the hypotenuse squared is equal to the sum of the squares on the other two sides. Let's check uh, that we have the 
theorem of Pythagoras straight for some other cases. So let's have a look at these three uh, triangles here. And what I want us to do is write down what the theorem of Pythagoras tells us for each of these three cases here. I'm going to do one together with you. So if we have a look, before we can apply the theorem of Pythagoras, we always need to check, are we in a right angle triangle? So yes, we are in a right angle triangle. The next thing we need to do is make sure we identify the hypotenuse. Now remember, the hypotenuse is the one that is opposite the right angle. So this thing here is the hypotenuse. And now it's easy. We can go ahead and write down. We know Pythagoras tells us hypotenuse squared. So in this case, it's y squared is equal to, and you go each of the other sides, squared, x squared plus z squared. Okay, I want you to try the other two now in your homework books. Pause the video and do that, and we'll go over it. Okay, so this one, 90 degrees, so opposite it, you've got your hypotenuse, and so you can say q squared is equal to p squared plus r squared. And in this case, here's your 90. Opposite it, you're going to get your hypotenuse. So you can say E squared is equal to, uh, let me just get that nicely, is equal to D squared plus F squared. Okay, so what we really want our theorem of Pythagoras to do is help us work out in some practical scenarios. So for example, if you have this triangle here and you know that this side is 7 and this side is 3, we can ask the question, well, how big is this side? So I'm going to just call the side I want to figure out. I'm going to call that x. Now you can see here, we are in a right angle triangle. There's your right angle. So we can use Pythagoras to help us here. So first thing we need to do, as always, is identify what's the hypotenuse, the one opposite the 90. And then we go and write out what we have. So Pythagoras tells us hypotenuse squared is equal to the square of the other two sides added together. The squares of the other two sides added together. So what you get here, then, is that 49 is equal to 9 plus x squared. And now you've got a little equation that you just need to work out to work through to get to x. So what you're going to get here, right, is you're going to subtract 9 on both sides of the equation. So you're going to get 40 is equal to x squared. And so x will just be the square root of 40. And we can go to our calculator. Um, square root of 40 is an irrational number. Uh, we can go to our calculator and plug that in, take square root of 40, and we can get an approximation, which is about 6, 3. That we get out from our calculator. One of the things Pythagoras also figured out was it worked the opposite way around as well. Um, and what this means is, we can use these ideas to tell if we've got a right-angled triangle. So what Pythagoras also figured out is if you ended up in a situation where the biggest side of the triangle squared was equal to the other side squared plus the other side squared, then you would have a right-angled triangle. So we can use this, what's called the converse of Pythagoras, to check whether we've got a right angle triangle. Now, here's one thing to have a look. I mean, if you have a look at this picture here, you can say to me, but I mean, I don't really need to do anything. I mean, I, if I look at those, I mean, that looks like a right angle and that looks like a right angle. Why do I need to bother to check anything? Well, here's the thing. As we go on and on in geometry, what you're going to see is we don't want you to just trust your eyes and say, oh, that looks like 90 degrees. And so it is, because in fact, this could have been 91 degrees, and you'd still think it looks like 90. We're going for the absolute exact. Mm -hmm. And when we're going for the exact, we only use information that has been given to us, not what it looks like to us. So let's have a look and see, is this thing a right angle triangle? Well, this converse of Pythagoras tells us that what we need to have a look at is we need to look at what the biggest side squared is and then we also need to look at take the other two sides and square each of them and if it turns out that these two things are equal to each other then we know we have 
a right angled triangle. Okay, so let's have a look in this case. What's your biggest side? There your biggest side is this 10. So what you're going to have is you're going to have, oh, I need a pen. The biggest side squared is 10 squared, which is 100. And then your other two sides, well, it's 6 squared plus 8 squared. 6 squared is 36. 8 squared is 64. 36 plus 64 is 100. And so because that and that are the same, we, this is a right angled triangle. Okay, let's try this one. So in this case, we're going to have again, look at your, what's your biggest side squared equal to? Well, the biggest one in this case is obviously the 4. So that's 4 squared, which is 16. And then what we've got to have a look at is we've got to look at doing the other two and adding them together and seeing if that gives us the same answer. So side 1 squared, it's 2 squared, plus side 2 squared, it's 3 squared. And so that gives me 4 plus 9, that gives me 13. Now have a look here, this and this, they are not equal to each other. And so this is not a right angled triangle. 